So we're going to talk about the um, ascending tracts of both the dorsal column and the spinothalamic uh, tract. So the big picture is we basically need to get sensation from the lower extremities up to the brain to be interpreted for our cerebral cortex to understand what's going on in our conscious world. So the big thing to understand between both of these is essentially where are these signals crossing to get up to the brain. In the dorsal column, it crosses in the medulla, as you can see the X for the crossing or decusation. In the spinothalamic tract, it crosses immediately as soon as it gets into the spinal cord. So, dorsal column crosses in the medulla. So, if you've seen the water boy, something wrong with your medulla, medulla oblongata, and the, uh, and the professor, uh, what is his name, Larity, that guy looked like, uh, yeah, so he got tackled and put on his back, so the dorsal column, that's where the, uh, it crosses in the medulla, so the medulla oblongata. All right, so now in both of these pathways, the primary motor neuron is found to be in the dorsal root ganglion. From there, the, the, uh, the signals are sent through the dorsal column up the nucleus gracilis, which is also called the vesiculus gracilis. Good to know both names. It continues to travel after it synapses with the second motor neuron up the medial lemniscus through the midbrain and then it synapses with the third motor neuron which is the ventricular posterolateral nucleus. From here the signals get sent through the internal capsule where they fan out through the to the uh, uh, cerebral cortex for interpretation. Now, depending on what textbook you read, there's some variation as with everything, it seems. Uh, some mention the internal capsule, some don't, but uh, I would say that uh, I would stick with it going through the internal capsule uh, after it synapses in the uh, VPN, and, uh, and then it goes out from there. Other things to, to, uh, to know is the orientation and where this is occurring. So... The internal capsule uh, separates certain structures. Uh, this is the anterior internal capsule, and this is the posterior aspect of the internal capsule. So if, you're to, if you were to get a question and ask what borders the posterior aspect of the internal capsule, you got your thalamus, medial, and then lateral you have your lenticulate nucleus. The lenticulate nucleus is comprised of Two, two structures. One is the globus pallidus, which has an internal and externa, and the putamen. So the putamen and the globus pallidus make up the lenticular nucleus. So the posterior capsule is the thalamus and the lenticular nucleus. The anterior capsule uh, has the, is bordered by the uh, cuneate nucleus, I'm sorry, the, the, the caudate nucleus, and the, uh, the lenticular nuclei. So that's good to know. Um, fine touch and crude touch. The difference. Fine touch allows you to extrapolate specific data about the environment that you're coming in contact with. So if you're walking on grass or uh, rocks, pebbles, things like that, you're able to discern those fine points of touch. Whereas crude touch just tells you that you're being touched. It doesn't give you a whole lot of data. Uh, so it's very non-discriminatory. Clinically, this would have relevance. Uh, the dorsal column would test for, uh, you would test for two-point discrimination. So say somebody came in and had a laceration to their finger, you, there's tools that will measure uh, the distance between one point and another point. Uh, oftentimes people will use a paper clip because that's at about five millimeters which is the uh, borderline for having a, a neuro deficit. So for example someone came into a clinic and they had a, <clears throat> a laceration to the finger 
you would want to test two point discrimination to ensure that the digital nerve that travels along the lateral aspects of the, the lateral aspect of the finger or the medial aspect of the finger, if it's cut or not, you can test that by doing two point discrimination and then seeing where it uh, falls within. Um, other things to note, uh, proprioception. Um, one thing that may come up is proprioception of the face. Uh, good to know that proprioception of the face travels through the chief sensory nucleus. Um, and if you're dealing with pain uh, or temperature of the face, then that uh, goes through the spinal nucleus. Uh, whereas a proprioception is chief sensory nucleus, temperature and pain go through the spinal nucleus. Okay, so now the spinal thalamic tract. Unlike the dorsal column where it ascends to cross in the medulla, the spinal thalamic tract, after the, pri after the primary motor uh, neuron here, it synapses with the secondary motor neuron in the dorsal horn, and then it crosses at the level it comes in uh, of the spinal cord. It travels up the spinal thalamic tract through the midbrain, and like the other dorsal column, like the other uh, track in the dorsal column, the third motor neuron lies in the VPN, the ventral posterior lateral nucleus. So the main difference between the dorsal column and the spinal thalamic tract is where it crosses. Dorsal, remember, uh, water boy, something wrong with your medulla oblongata, gets tackled, he's on his back, dorsal. The guy gets on his back in his dorsal region, that's where it crosses. Spinal thalamic tract crosses immediately and sends those uh, pain temperature sensations to be interpreted uh, by the cerebral cortex once it synapses in the uh, third motor neuron in the thalamus region. Um, and it too uh, goes through the internal capsule as well uh, as it then begins to spread its signal out to the cortex for interpretation. Other things to note, uh, clinically, if you were to have a tumor that was in the anterior fissure of the spinal cord that was pushing into the gray matter where the uh, signals desic, uh, uh, desic, uh, where they cross, and I can't say that word, decusate, say the lesion was at um, T8. If the lesion is at T8 and is pushing into the uh, area where it decusates, then that is not going to allow the signals to cross. So therefore, you're not going to be able to, to discriminate any pain or temperature distal to the lesion because they can't cross. You'll, you'll be able to feel everything from T8 up. So if you were to test a sensation in a dermatome, which is a pattern that runs, uh, that gives, uh, that ties into the exiting nerve roots outside the spinal uh, cord. Uh, so if you're to test a dermatome in a certain area of the body, then you'll be able to uh, elicit pain and temperature above the lesion. So it's good to know that uh, this will block signals to ascend up the column for interpretation. A um, couple other things to note. Uh, on top of the cerebral cortex, uh, you'll come across something called the sensory homunculus. This is basically a road map of the brain um, and how uh, certain areas of the brain tie into picking up data from other areas of the body. So, for example, the face and the hand take up a large area. Why? Because it's about the amount of sensory receptors and not the area of the actual part uh, in the physical body. It's about the amount of sensory receptors. So if you think about the tongue and the face and the saliva glands, um, eating and so forth, it's highly innervated. You have a lot of sensory receptors, so it's going to take up a larger portion of the sensory homunculus. Same thing with the, with the hand. It's highly innervated by nerves, a lot of sensory fibers. So therefore, uh, this allows us to be able to discriminate and touch and use our hands to survive. Uh, this is why if you ever give someone an injection to the hand, such as a trigger point injection, 
you better tell them it hurts because it's it's uh, it, it's quite painful. I don't know if you, you should have one. I think if you give injections, you should uh, get them all within reason so you understand what it's like uh, if you do when you do something to your patient. So very sensitive uh, portion in in the hand, um, and then you can see you know the the foot and the leg much smaller area because you don't really need to have a whole lot of uh, sensory input there. It's not as important as the hand and the fingers. Um, the, uh, looking at the cortex, um, here's your central gyrus. Um, you have a precentral gyrus in the front and post central gyrus in the back. The precentral gyrus is involved in voluntary motor control. And if you look at something called Brodmann's area, it's a mapping of the brain and different areas are labeled accordingly. The precentral gyrus is four and six. The postcentral gyrus is three, one, and two. And this is involved in somatosensory. So if you're involved in medicine or you're involved in other classes where you're trying to absorb a lot of data, Sometimes it's just impossible to retain everything. So one way is to link things together, okay? Whether you do it by mnemonics or, um, or, or tying it together through a story, you'll always be able to, to recall it um, uh, much easier. So the uh, one thing you can do, um, if you went to a post office, uh, you went to the post office, the address was 312 on the door, uh, when you walked up, you, you kind of thought it was strange. Some guy was sitting out at a desk selling Soma to people. Um, you can kind of create this visual in your head. Make it as crazy as you want. It, it doesn't matter if somebody thinks it's kooky or not. As long as you're able to recall it for the test, recall it years down the road, that's what matters. Okay, so don't worry about anything else. Uh, voluntary motor. Um, this is the pre. So... Maybe you might want to think about, you know, you can buy your stamps at the post office. You know, it's kind of mandatory there. But the, uh, if you want to go get your stamps at the pre-post the pre office, the other building somewhere else or any other place, well, you can do that voluntarily. Uh, but once you go to the post office, it's mandatory that if you don't have them, you buy them because that's where the final uh, transaction takes place. So the pre-post office is voluntary. And that address on the door is 46, so that might be one way to remember. Whatever you do, make it your own. As long as it works for you, that's, that's all that matters. One last thing I'd like to point out is 17 is for the visual cortex. Uh, you know, I was walking the other day, and I saw this guy who had a big 17 tattooed on the back of his head. I thought it was pretty, pretty strange, pretty odd, but hey, to each their own. Uh, and it so happens that 17 is actually the visual cortex. This is the, uh, the first area in which data is, is being perceived um, for a visual, um, visual data. And that comes from the lateral geniculate nucleus in the thalamus. So um, uh, that's good to know. Also, the uh, visual cortex is good. Uh, its primary data is for uh, pattern recognition, very good at pattern recognition. Uh, detecting static and uh, um, moving objects. So um, that's the, uh, the visual cortex for you. So I hope that made sense. If there's any errors, please, uh, by all means, email me and let me know so we can make any corrections. Thank you.